uh, for Between the White Lines and Between the White Lines Australia, I'm delighted to welcome today a pioneer in many ways in community uh, growth and participation for tennis, which is John Cavill. And John heads up an organization called Tennis Works, and I'm delighted that he's here today. Thank you. Uh, John, tell us about your community initiative or your school's initiative. Quite simply, um, what we've been doing is putting 30 minute videos uh, each week into schools um, by our school sports partnership. Um, and this then gets distributed to 90 primary schools in Milton Keynes, uh, which is a reach of about 18,000 children. And simply the PE staff will use the videos, which are tennis at home activities. So, you know, you don't need a, a tennis racket. You don't need necessarily a tennis ball. You can use socks bundled up. You can use frying pans. You can use books, balloons, all anything around the household um, that can be used and adapted for these exercises. And simply the, the PE teachers will pass them out to the school children to give them physical tennis activity, which they can do at home. Okay, fabulous. So Between the White Lines is all about glorifying, promoting what we call, call tennispreneurs, mm -hmm. private sector tennis coaches that are entrepreneurial. Uh, and we're not anti, of course, any national federation. Our, our idea is to partner with them. Yeah. So just tell us, like, why? What problem, what problem are you solving? Like, why, why bother? Uh, and if you can, why, why is it that you can do what you're doing and the National Federation can't? The reason why I came up with this idea initially was because my four-year-old was first time she's had to do online learning um, because the other times the, the schools were still either going in, although lockdown was on. Um, and I felt that the reason why this needed to be done is because tennis needs to get into the schools. Usually we will go into the schools, um, which I'm passionate about because that's my belief is tennis coaches, tennis in schools will grow the game. Uh, and then hopefully the children will filter through to the clubs, the parks, wherever else they continue. But it has to start where there's masses and masses of children, which is schools. So that's my reason behind this. And because we can't go into schools, this is the best way to be able to get to as many people as possible. Actually, we'll get to more people than we probably would if we went round all the schools because it's all in their home and it's straight to them. So this is the why this is a, such a good initiative to be able to get to so many people and get them to have a flavor of tennis and show them that it's fun and they can get involved. Okay, so clearly this is not the first, it's not like, oh, aha, let's go into schools there's a well-trodden path into schools so why is yours different uh and why you like why 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 are you capable of doing this i know but about your daughter but yeah. what have you done in terms of community growth of tennis participation when i set up tennis works in 2000 um we very much were very going into schools so myself had a team of coaches schools community centers leisure centers we were doing lots of stuff like that so I had a great, um, that's where I started in, in terms of getting grassroots tennis as big as possible. We have up to a thousand people a week coming through the programs. So from there, I had a great relationship with our school sports partnership. So my, my big thing was making sure those connections with the education system were very close uh, and I got all the support I could from that. So from there, then that was why I was able to do this quite quickly. I made a call to my games organizer, told her about the idea, but like she then supported it. And then that was the reason why I was able to do this. Um, the good thing is I shared the same idea with um, other coaches across the UK, because look, it's great for me. Uh, I've got all these 90 schools all being in, you know, infused by tennis and they will come to my club, but how about I share this idea and I get thousands more kids playing, although I'm financially not going to benefit them, but that's not what it's about. It's about getting more kids into the game. So the other coaches now have taken on the idea, had amazing success as well. And we've got just over 2000 schools now between us across the UK who are receiving the weekly videos. So 
the number of children this is going to, to bring into the game is quite mind blowing. Um, let's just focus on you, Tennis Works, and your yep. club for a second, yep. because whatever you do, if you've got a model, a method, then it's just replicable. Yes. So fantastic on what you've done so far. I just want to zero in on John Cavill, Tennis Works, and your tennis club. Do you own a tennis club or you've partnered with? And talk me through your 90 schools and the whole pathway from schools, school children, give it a go lessons at your club, how many stay in the game, yeah. all that. Give me the pathway. Brilliant. So I'm the director of tennis, head coach at Stony Stratford Tennis Club, which is a nine court club um, in Milton Keynes. And I've been there nine years. So prior to that, I was doing lots of stuff, like I said, in the community um, on parks and leisure centres. So the model really is that we, I have a business partner called Melvin Jones, who helps me with, or helps us with the administration, the marketing, all the running operation, allows me to go crazy and do my silly stuff, my ideas, which is brilliant. So I think everyone needs some support. Um, but by getting the kids in at the schools, so we do demos, we do assemblies, we do days in schools, all that kind of stuff. So that's, that's kind of the bottom, get them infused. And then from there, they feed into our club. So we give them free trial sessions. We have open days. We have, uh, we have all kinds of things that will then entice them, school festivals, things like that held at our venue to then allow them to come in. Once they're in, we're over to speak to more of the, more being able to speak to parents because it's not the decision makers by the children, although they'll be infused and they'll go home and say, oh, I've had a great time with John today and whatever. But it's then it's the parents. But this is the key. Tennis is a tool. It's not the be or end all. It's the skills that you can learn through tennis, the values and everything which we all know. But this is the sell to a parent. And you could sell this to me all day long. You want your kid to be able to concentrate better, make thousands of decisions, uh, deal with adversity. This goes on and on and on and on. If you say, well, come to tennis, we'll give you all that. We'll teach you that. We'll help you with that. There we go. It's a no brainer. Who cares about if they can hit the best forehand or win national championships or anything like that? I mean, that's nice and it can happen, but it's not the focus. And I think that that's where we attract and we communicate and we always go on those kind of uh, everything is judged based on positivity concentration and effort and that's our kind of three values that we stick by because they very much link to attitude and so you can't get away from that you can have an absolute stinker of a match but if you showed those really good scores in those three qualities you are rewarded you're praised now you could win a match quite easy but then have a you know poor concentration or whatever and you you know just because the level was in and again you will be judged based on those. So I think that these are the core things which we do as an organization within our club to really bring people together to understand the value of what we do. And so from that, they can do weekly tennis. So they can rock up and just do their, you know, they can join the squads or the little programs and things like that. We have junior club night, we have cheap membership, which in, and in that membership is it's only 61.50 a year for our kids to come and they get two hours club night. We have tuck shop. We have, so it's more like a social um, event. So for everyone to come. And then on top of that, we have, uh, like I said, we have our coaching program. So people come maybe once a week or they, they join the multi-skills sessions or they mini tennis, all of that kind of wonderful stuff. But then the next tier is if people really want to compete, and play regularly we have a competition program so we've got children then who are playing from about five six years old who are playing at least twice a week individual lessons um, but the major thing is that they compete they don't need to be traveling the country playing silly you know silly amounts of tennis because that is that can be counterproductive but as long as they they uh, come along to the internal competitions the local ones we organize and all of that so we, we, we pretty much organize that for them um, but then right up, then the kids are training like four or five times a week. We've got some in the top 100 in their age group. So they're really pushing hard. But again, the same values have, uh, have given to them as they are the five-year-olds. So it's no different. Everyone's the same. But the other great thing we've got is we do hitting squads. So we invite the kids to come in different age groups, hitting squads. But we invite the ones who are older 
to come and join the younger and they become the mentors. And, and, and what's wonderful, it's like the bigger brother system. So we've got these uh, 13 year olds helping the eight year olds and the eight year olds are like, oh yeah, you're amazing. And you know, and they, they absolutely adore them. But the older one just absolutely thrive. And not only there that, you know, they have to help them, but they're also growing their their whole personality and how they communicate and 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 that whole thing about nurturing the next ones through so i just think this is a whole we've got a, such a great connection through and at the moment this is hot off the press um i've got half a dozen uh, teenagers during lockdown we've been talking about all kinds of stuff because i do weekly catch-ups until we can get back to the courts hopefully uh, end of the month but um a vast them what they wanted out of a club what's going to keep these teenagers in the club so between us we've come up with well they've come up with the ideas they want a band night they want a table tennis tournament and they want a quiz night so now they're putting together these three events that they want and also to include non-members people from outside to come in and they've got to uh, do a dragon's den pitch to the chairman next week um, but between you and I, um, the chairman kind of knows that, they're, that it's a great thing, a wonderful thing. And he, so he's very supportive about that. So now we're trying to get the teenagers to become like the next junior committee or the committee members. So they're now having ownership over what they can do at their club. And, and then hopefully, again, they will continue to want to be involved for many years to come. John Cavill, didn't want to stop your flow. Every time you opened your mouth, it's it spat a question or uh, an acknowledgement or some praise for you. Uh, <laughs> so a few things. One, you must speak at the next winning summit, which will be after Wimbledon. I will do. Which is all about how to train champions off court while we're training champions on court. Yeah. We had 42 speakers last time. Uh, but your progression from playground to podium and even the teenagers now learning about leadership and management as they put something back. You know, I'm just blown away by all that. Um, talk me through your numbers, if you like. How many you track from schools? What's the conversion to the clubs? What's the conversion to the... Just give us an idea of numbers and conversions. Usually it's about 10% when you go into a school. So, and it's, it, it's got harder. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I think the, when I first started doing this 20 years ago, um we had a lot more people coming in and i think the reason behind that is because there's more competition for other stuff especially te technology um I, I think that's one of our biggest battles is is, is technology in terms it's, it's wonderful and we can use it but i think it's a battle but what i do think you mean by roughly, technology do you mean what do you mean by technology do you mean social media do you mean games what do you mean xbox games okay. yeah stuff that you can do at home <laughs> because it's it's trying to make it it's trying to make also the things that technology teaches you um doesn't necessarily teach you the good skills that you need to progress at tennis if i want to get good at a game you can quite easily you know start sitting there playing away and whatever and i mean it does take time to get good at a certain game but you can also um progress quite quickly with that where tennis is sometimes a lot harder a lot longer um, and it takes, a, I feel it takes a different skill set to really progress. So tangentially, and then we'll come back to the numbers. What I yeah. love is that you're turning the tennis court into a social meeting place. Yes. As well as a training and a competitive arena. So that's Indeed. a multi-use of a tennis court. Fantastic. Um, VR, AI, that's coming down the line. It's a revolution that's going to happen. And mm -hmm. if you like, that is technology meeting tennis. Have you researched this? Do you know much about it? Because I see that as part of the social and training and competition, AI VR can solve all that. Yeah, it can't. You, there's no replacement for going on a tennis court and hitting balls. There is, it, well, it, it's it, very similar because all the ball physics are done. It is. Do not underestimate it apart from running around yes it will replicate it a lot even if you're running two meters here and two meters there but yeah so but i just how do you, how you to do look you replace yeah no you're not but replacing you replace yeah no 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 you're not replacing um but it is an addendum two which is applying new technologies i.e. ai and vr 
And instead mm -hmm. of doing Xbox where you're shooting up people, you could be doing tennis uh, yeah. and learning repetitive skills in fun in your clubhouse. So you could train in the clubhouse, train on the tennis court, play a match. Maybe. I, I'm not sold. I think okay. the receptive skills would be very difficult. <laughs> okay. um, and so also, let's go back to your numbers. I'm just really interested yeah. how your yeah. club might be thriving yeah. at the various yeah. sections and therefore how yeah. other, other tennis clubs and head coaches could use your methodology and pathway to do exactly the same thing. There's no need to reinvent the wheel. Yeah. John's, John's got the wheel. Right. So yeah. go through your numbers and I think with the schools, if you would. Yeah, indeed. So within the schools, um, we have about a thousand children. So, it, and that's across the board, okay? So within that thousand children, we'll expect to get about a hundred come through to the club, um, which, you know, sometimes it will fluctuate 150, 100. So we'll get a hundred and this, these, these will then feel through to the club. From this 100, 100, we have a pretty high retention rate. We'll probably only lose about maybe 20. We'll retain 80 of that. And that's where I came back to the selling the values of tennis. That's, that's the sell. The 20% might be because of logistics, finances, other things. Okay, but if, if everything, the value sell. And then from that 80, 80, stage, 80 children, then they will then filter through into your into the mini tennis, the junior program, and so on. And they pretty much we we might lose maybe another twenty over the year. Um, so we'll be down to about sixty. Um, but then we retain a lot for many many years. I mean, we've got kids that started at like four years old and they're they're going off to university. So we we've had that whole oh. revolution. So. Yeah. And I mean, at the moment, problem. we've got so about this, 400. This, okay, beautiful. So this 1000 into 80, this, this cycle just goes on and on and on. Indeed. Yes. I have two major questions to ask you. Yep. I understand what you've done and it is amazing, but the glue, I think the elixir, the magic is how you can ignite passion, love, mm -hmm and belonging into a child and their parents. That's the secret source. Yes. How do you do that? Indeed. How do you do love, passion and belonging, John? That's 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 the 64,000 question. Time and love, it comes from within. My, my coaches who work for me, we're a team of five and we are a team. They all have to be on the same page. If we've got one that doesn't think in, or feel the same way that I feel, then it's not happening. So it's not just about me, but it's about them. So the more you give, the more you get. I'm very, very much a big believer about that. So if you feel that you need to give something or give something more because someone needs it, do it. Don't expect anything back, but you probably will. And that's, that, that's pretty much how we believe. Who was John Cavill for John Cavill? Who ignited love, passion and belonging in you? I, I mean, my parents are wonderful. So they're the ones that really have inspired me to be successful, or to drive and go as far as I can. Um, but as a tennis coach, my first coach was Clive Carrigan, who he headed oh, up. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Clive Carrigan, one tennis, one ball more or whatever his yeah, one program more is. That's right. Wow, how about but, that? So he was, when I was 14 years old, I was late to the game. I only came in at 14. I played loads of football until then. And I met Clive at Bedgrove Park. So it was a park court. And uh, I came and played some tennis with him. Then I followed him to Ellsbury Tennis Club. And, and Clive was the one who who made me, I mean, we, we went to America on a tennis tour and all this, but he was, he was, he was so inspirational for me. And um, obviously, you know, Clive, but he's the one that kind of set me off on this, this, this wonderful journey, to be honest. Fantastic. I just want everybody watching, and we already know it, about how we are the source of everything mm. uh, and how we pass the baton on and legacy we create how many lives that we touch even though we know we don't know the lives that we've touched 
with Clive to you, you to many others, and many others that will be doing it. So I think, I just think that's phenomenal, mate. Um, do you have a methodology? Is it documented? Could any coach anywhere in the world contact you and either have it for free or pay you for your methodology? Could, could that happen? Yes, yes, and yes. I've got it. Um, anyone can have it. And if you want help, let me know. I've got it. It's, it's all there. Just, I'm just thinking now, because if you don't have a model, if you don't have a method, then it can't be replicated, grown and scaled. Yeah. Okay. So you've done that. And there's no reason why your 1000 into 80 uh, and the growth onwards can't be replicated everywhere. No, not at all. And I mean, I spoke to a, a, a guy up in Scotland yesterday, a coach up there. Uh, we had an hour conversation and it just basically quizzed me, quizzed me on what I do and how I do it. And, and so it set him off thinking about how he's going to do it now going forward. So the more I look, it just works for me. It, it not, not necessarily work in how it is for me where you are, but it can be adapted. So it's about the core and about the creativity because you should, you know, you shouldn't slavishly adopt. You should creatively adapt. And, and that's where that fits into your situation. And then you, you, you work it how you wish. But it would seem that if you don't have energy, if you don't have passion, if you don't have love, then don't apply. No, not at all. Because it's not going to work. It has no, to come no, no, from no, the no. heart. This is, and I would argue that for you to go through corporate governance and due diligence would strip out the essence of John Calvo. And Indeed. that's why many programs don't work, because they've stripped out the essence even though there are fabulous people, fabulous materials, fabulous distribution. Uh, look, let's just sign off because I kind of gather you've got a, you're part of a national fundraising effort and that's yep. another twist that people could use all around the world. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, Comet Relief is coming up 19th of March. Schools probably not even thought about what they're going to do to fundraise because of you know, the pandemic and they're just worried about getting back to school. Coaches I've spoken to, nobody's really put that to the mind. So I've got a, a very simple um, challenge called the Red Nose Tennis Challenge. Um, it's through our collaboration of coaches which have helped do this wonderful work um, with the videos in the schools. Uh, the, 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 the Facebook page is facebook.com forward slash tennis unlocked. That's our collaborative name. And through uh, the Red Nose Tennis Challenge, it's basically putting five activities into schools, into clubs, anyone can do it, with a link for, for parents, friends, anyone to sponsor that child to do those activities. First thing is so simple, money goes to Comet Relief, so it's gonna raise loads and loads of really, really valuable funds, especially at these times. Um, and it raises the awareness of tennis, and also coaches off the back of it can also put an offer in. So we're going to offer all the schools or anyone who gets involved a free session at the club. So it, they can come and, and obviously come and do some tennis with us when it's safe. Awesome. Last question, John. Yes. You're obviously addicted to tennis. Have you ever tried counselling to get you off? <laughs> I don't think I want to. It's probably the best addiction anyone could ever have, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, so yes, I did. And it was working. So I sacked the counsellor. <laughs> <laughs> no i don't think you could i think i'm taking tennis to the grave <laughs> good well well done for all you're doing for the sport and for your club at milton Keynes. and i'm hoping that people from australia will contact you and as between the white lines and winning summit grows you'll get more and more contacts john thank you for what you're doing for the sport thank you for your time